Today we're at the Ceriza house and we're talking how flooring choices determine how thick your concrete slab is and how you build a basement. I'm Dave Edwards with Earthbound Homes. And I'm Brett. And let's take it away. We were uh, going over this the other day in the office and we noticed that there's five different types of flooring down here, which meant that in order to get all the tops of those floors level and smooth so there's no risers or transitions, we actually had to plan that way before we actually talked about putting flooring in here. And we had to adjust the level or the height of this concrete to adjust for those flooring. So tell us a little bit about the different options you have down here and how you had to account for those in this floor. So there's a lot of things going on with this floor. You have the mat slab. On top of that mat slab, we have to think about having insulation. So we've got an inch and a half of EPS going on top of the slab. On top of that, we have some gypcrete, an inch and a half of gypcrete, so we can run our radiant heating through that because we have radiant heating in this floor. So what's gypcrete? Gypcrete is a gypsum material that they um, coagulate with a, some kind of a chemical that makes it stick together. So it's like concrete, but it's really soft. So gypsum is the same stuff that's in sheetrock? Yes. So it's like a combination of gypsum and cement that flows. And why do we use that down here? So that we can run our radiant floor through. They'll have coils of radiant heating that they run through this whole thing. They'll heat that up or cool it down in some cases to get a conditioning in an airspace. Okay, so the, the gypcrete, which looks like uh, cement without, without rocks in it, right. or concrete without rocks in it, has PEX running through it. And that gives you a lot of thermal mass for your radiant system, so that allows the, the house to stay warm or cold depending on the season. Yes, you just okay. have to do your application right. You don't put it under your insulation, you put it on top of so that it comes into the room. Okay, and so then on top of the gypcrete, do we have anything? Well, in some cases we do. Um, in this area right here, the major part of this, we have a three quarter inch uh, engineered hardwood, and that's easy to put in after the fact. In some of these areas where you see some, some form material, we're going to indent that down five inches because we're going to use a different kind of system in there. We'll have the insulation, we'll have the- Gypcrete? The, not gypcrete in here, we'll oh. have concrete in here, and that concrete has to be polished because they want polished concrete in these areas. So we'll put concrete with the coils in the concrete, actual concrete. So why do we have a different concrete here than we have uh, here? That's a good question, Dave. The kind of concrete we're putting out here is 70% fly ash, and it's a very hard concrete. The polishing sanders that they use on there, even though they're diamond, they'll burn up in 10 feet of this. So we have to use just regular concrete build up in these areas. That'll happen here, here, and in a couple other areas downstairs. So the concrete that we use for with foundations that has this high fly ash and coal slag is actually a stronger, harder concrete than normal concrete that uses a lot of cement. Yet the fly ash and the slag are actually waste products from the coal-fired power plant industry and the steel smelting industry. So we're not only getting a better product in the, in the long run, but we're actually reducing the environmental impact of the concrete that we're building with because we're using these waste products. That's right, it's a really big difference between the fly ash concrete and regular concrete as, as far as it goes with the uh, testing and how many pounds that will have. So how many different layers do you have in this one uh, basement? Once the mat slab is in, we'll have three different layers on top of that. And then how many, so how many different elevations within the, uh, within the basin? Because I know we have, we have this, the sewage ejector pump, we have the grinded, the ground concrete section, we have the hardwood floor section, we have this room over here, and then we have the, essentially the light well as well. So there's five different layers that we have in this one basement. Yeah, so it goes up and down and those all have to be right. I would rather go five inches where I only need four because you can't go down after you pour it. Got it. And so you had to plan this out way ahead of time. Yeah, this had to be planned out way ahead of time and the uh, communication with all the people that are assembling, it has to be perfect too. So adapting the architect's plans with the structural engineer's plans with the ability of the concrete subcontractors to do all this right is a tremendous uh, communication responsibility. Yeah, it's 
it's hard to do, but you look at the benefits of it and it's really, really worth it. Awesome. So if you're interested in learning more about basements and about all the things that we have to do to communicate to make sure that this architectural gem of a house comes out right, please hit subscribe as we show you how to build a better way.